Hello there, YouTube. I'm Sly LSR, street photographer, musician, whatever. I'd like to speak to you today about the Zuiko 24mm f2.8. So, this, as I mentioned before, I'm a street photographer, so I've taken this out on my Olympus OM1 on several visits to London in particular. Um, had picked up some great shots with it. Um, you can pick up a lot of different. You can pick up a lot of different things in different locations. The 24 millimeter focal length is really handy for that. And I'm talking about the fucking mic. The 24 millimeter focal length is very handy in street photography. Strangely enough, I know a lot of people used to using 50s. 28s, 35s, you know, um, all of which I have, and all of which are fantastic focal lengths. Sometimes it's not enough. Sometimes you need a bit wider. Sometimes wider angle lenses can actually give you a different perspective, and it can be very helpful. I've, there's been two or three occasions where I've gone, wow, I wouldn't have done this if I didn't actually have the 24 on me. Say if I had the 50 or the 35 I wouldn't have taken a shot that particular way, so it forces you to do things a bit differently than perhaps you wouldn't normally do. Um, so I'm going to stick my first shot up, and this shot was is taken of HMS Belfast on South Bank of London. There we go. Okay, so when where this is lined up, there's a little cafe slash restaurant on the edge of the South Bank, and in between there. Railings come in, round the sides, back in, and it's just very awkward. I'm trying to explain that it's very awkward in there to get a decent shot. Now, being 24 millimeters, it's very handy for getting a wide shot. Now, what I've done, as you can see from, from this photograph, is I have actually not got all of HMS Belfast in the photograph. The, the point behind that is I wanted to get some of those buildings in and I deliberately didn't want to get any of the railings or the walls that are on the south bank, which would happen if, if I moved slightly further back. I didn't want to get any of the railings or the walls that would have happened if I moved slightly further back. And oddly enough, for this street shot, I didn't want any sort of people from the south bank in the photograph. <laughs> I've got plenty of those already. So... Um, I think that this is actually, I really like this shot, this is on 35mm film, this was taken on my OM-1, my very handy, faithful Olympus OM-1. I really like that shot and I found the focal length here to be exactly what I needed for that kind of shot. Now I could have got this on the 28, or similar shot on the 28, however... Being, I mean, Olympus considers it an ultra wide. It's just a, I, I consider it just another wide angle lens. But, but, but considering back when it came out, it was considered an ultra wide lens. And the reason I did it with the twenty four instead of the twenty eight millimeter is I just wanted that tiny bit more detail in the frame. It, it just allowed me to get a bit more in the frame, and I deliberately positioned it so instead of um, rule of thirds with. HMS Belfast either on the lower of the horizontal HMS Belfast was actually in the middle of the frame rather than on the top third or the lower third. Going to stick another shot up, take them with the 24mm onto Tri-X. So both these shots, so the HMS Belfast and this one I'm about to put up, are pushed in development to 1600. I underdeveloped by two stops. Um, on the camera I set it to 1600 ASA, even though the film was only 400 ASA. Anyway... This next shot I'm about to stick up. This is also taken on the South Bank. Um, and I another shot I, I wouldn't have been able to get quite the same feel if I didn't have the 24mm. Certainly with my 50, I did attempt this once with my 50mm and said, I need to come back with a wide angle lens. And what did I do? I came back with a wide angle lens. So on the left of the photograph, I wanted the buildings you can see and the skyscrapers you can see of London the, against the skyline uh, in a leading line all the way across towards uh, eventually where the two lines meet of the South Bank pathway and uh, the actual River Thames and the buildings along the skyline all meet. 
And just, just down there, just out of sight, is Tower Bridge and HMS Belfast. You might just be able to see a tiny bit of HMS Belfast in there. So the pros for this lens, fantastic little lens. This is a tiny little lens. Let me get the... So the 50 millimeter. This is the 50 millimeter. Right here. No, right here. <laughs> So it's very, in fact, it's slightly smaller than the 50mm f1.8 and f1.4. Another positive to this lens, it looks fantastic on film. Uh, it doesn't distort in a horrible way at all. Um, it, it just comes out really well. The, the different shades of grey and the and contrast that come through is it's just fantastic. Uh, negatives, standard negatives with any sort of wide lens or any ultra wide lens is it's not going to be perfect for any situation. You're not, it's, well, you might use it for portraits. I've actually used it um, in obscure street portraiture. It's very rare. I've got nothing to stick up at the moment, unfortunately, on this drive. But um, any other negatives? Yeah, it's it's not it's not an all rounder. It's it's a specialist lens, as as you would know of most wide angle lenses. The focusing ring is quite it's it's not actually that large. The aperture ring's fine. Nothing particular nasty about it. Uh, Olympus, the old Olympus lenses, all the lens caps are a bit crap, unfortunately. I'm gonna stick up some images at the end of this video. It will also be some digital shots, so you're going to get some digital colour in there, as well as 35mm film, because I know that people are looking at these older lenses for their digital cameras, and that's fair enough. I'm just going to quickly jump in there about the digital side of things. So I've been using the 24f 2.8mm Zuiko lens on, via adapter, sorry, onto my Fuji X-T1 onto my Fuji X-T1 via adapter, and I've had some great results. So it's a 36 millimeter equivalent, I think 1.5 crop factor, 36. And it, it looks cool, it looks fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, and the reason I'm putting some color pictures up is actually I wanted to use this lens and I, it, when taking some more landscape -y type shots. And I went over to the Farthing Downs in Coulston and took some shots. So I'm going to stick those up at the end. In fact, here's one for you now. Downside to using on digital cameras, uh, for a lot of people that like autofocus, obviously you're not going to get the autofocus. Boop. But you're going to get that with any older lens you adapt. You already know about that if you're getting into it. So this lens itself costs me around between £90 and... 130 pounds uh, perhaps equivalent in in different currencies different countries would i choose an old analog lens over a digital version for a camera just because it's cheaper no unless you're unless you have no other choice and you're not going to at any point be able to save up for it i don't see much point in that but it does work well with a digital camera it is a very nice lens and certainly one to have in your Zuiko collection if, you, if you're collecting Zuikos. This is one of my favourite lenses for the Olympus system, for the Olympus OM system. It's a fantastic wide-angle lens. Um, does exactly what it says on the tin. 24mm, f2.8 to f16. Nice. Fantastic. Anyway, I've been Sly LSR. Subscribe. Find me on Instagram, do whatever you like, have a good one.